We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, Jesus. We give you Father Almighty, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your support. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for bringing us to the second half of the year. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, tonight, like you have never done before, send down your fire. Refuel our fire. Let every one of us have a taste of your fire afresh. Oh, my Father, my God. This month is the seventh month of the year. The month of perfection. In your own miraculous way, perfect our healings tonight. Perfect our breakthroughs tonight. Perfect our joy tonight. Perfect our testimonies tonight. Do much more than we dare hope for. And at the end of it all, take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. I shake hands with one or two people and say, God will revive you tonight. And then you may be seated, except those who are born in July. Father, we thank you for your children born in the month of July. And because this is the seventh month, and seven is the number for perfection, everything that has to do with them make perfect. Give them perfect vision, perfect anointing, perfect joy, perfect progress, perfect service to God, 
and let their future be perfect. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And let someone shout hallelujah. All right, let's come to our topic for tonight. From the mountain top, part six. Refueling your fire. Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. And while you are opening your Bible, I think we should give the Almighty God a real clap offering for that first preacher. <laughs> My, oh my, that lady is a bunny flame. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. I mean, if you, if, you don't, if you don't learn anything at all, she said it clearly. On their way to heaven, on this journey, there will be petrol stations along the way. <laughs> Make sure you refer regularly. Don't say, I will pray tomorrow. Pray today. Don't leave anything spiritual to tomorrow. If that's the only thing you take home, that's something to remember for a long time to come. So, glory be to God. And uh, I think we should thank God for the all women choir by <laughs> I saw I saw some of those girls on the drums on the on the instruments that's beautiful Exodus 15 verse 1 and then 22 to 25 Exodus 15 verse 1 and then 22 to 25. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. Let's go on to verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Wherefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. When I bought my first car, it was a second hand, Dodge Avenger. As the Elderly man from whom I was buying it was handing over to me the car keys. He said to me, young man, keep an eye on the fuel gauge. Otherwise, you may be stranded by the roadside. He said, before you had no cow, you took taxi, you took a bus. So it's none of your business whether there's petrol in the engine or not. I mean, in the tank or not. But now, you own your own car. Keep an eye on the fuel cage. Before it reaches reserve, branch at the nearest petrol station and refuel. 
he didn't know he was just they thought he was just talking about the car but I learned a lesson that day before you run out of steam refuel I pray for every one of you listening to me today you will never be stranded Why must we refuel? The first speaker has done a great job, made my job much easy. He mentioned the fact that the Bible says your fire must not go out. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12. Leviticus 6 verse 12. They fire on your altar own personal altar must be burning forever it must not go out it must be burning morning burning afternoon burning night burning all the time why one major reason is in the text that I read to you after one victory you will need the fire again to confront the next battle. The children of Israel had just crossed the Red Sea. God had done marvelous things for them. And they refueled. Moses did. He got them to sing, to praise God. To thank him for what he had done. So when they now came to Mara, shortly after the great victory, they met another problem. This one is not Pharaoh. This one is not the host of Egypt. This one it is an enemy that is as sure a killer as any thirst. They came to a river, I mean water, pool of water. They wanted to drink and it was bitter. But because they had praised God for what he did in the past, they came to their aid again. That God who had helped you in the past, uh, maybe I should put this away. If there's anyone here who had ever received a miracle from God, if God had ever in any way helped you in the past, let me hear you shout hallelujah. I mean, when, when I listen to the testimonies of this evening, when I saw that child lifted up, that the doctors put a lot of pressure on the mother terminate this pregnancy terminate this pregnancy I said God thank you they didn't terminate my pregnancy aren't you grateful to God that you, you, your pregnancy was not aborted let me hear you shout another hallelujah <clears throat> When I had the testimony of the, of the one that the, the doctor said, listen, <laughs> you're already too old. And my God, ah, glory be to God. <laughs> my God, who knows all things, said, all right. They said, you are too old. And I subtract five years from your age. decree to somebody here today whatever God has to do to make sure that your joy is full may it be done tonight <laughs> after every victory get ready for another battle that's the way the word is made. Remember David. 
In 1 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 34 to 51, 4 Samuel 17, 34 to 51, first, it was the lion. He defeated the lion. Then, the bear. He defeated the bear. Then, Goliath. He defeated Goliath. Then, the father-in-law. One battle after another. It's like I told you yesterday, life is, is a series of victories. But every victory comes after a fight. You know, every time we pray and we say, God will give you a testimony, do you know what that means? It means that the next battle that is ahead, God will already fight it and give you victory. Consider something. Judges 15 from verse 14 to 15. Judges 15 from verse 14 to 15. He was untouchable when the fire was there. But when the fire went out, in Judges 16 from verse 18 to 21, Judges 16, 18 to 21, that mighty man of valor, ordinary human beings were toying with him, plucking out his eyes. You know yourself. When the stove is burning, anybody who touches the stove is going to get hot. But when the light has been out, when the fire has been out for a long time and the stove has become cold, flies, cockroaches can move around, walking up and down the stove. One of the prayers we are going to pray tonight is, God, make me so hot that the enemy won't be able to touch me. And I believe somebody will say amen to that. Amen. Your fire must not go out. Why? What my daughter who spoke before me referred you to the story of the ten virgins. How the fire of five was going out, and they had no else with which to refuel. Before they came back from buying, the bridegroom had come, and the door was shut. There are certain doors that do not remain open forever. There are certain doors that you must go in as soon as they open. And I have a rough idea of what I'm talking about. And then, number two, the reason why your fire must keep burning is that life is in degrees. John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. The Lord said, I have come or maybe we read it from the beginning. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. If the thief comes, that's the devil, and he finds that your fire is out, he will first of all start by stealing and then proceed to killing and then proceed to destroy. On the other hand, Jesus Christ said, I've come that to my half life and have it more abundantly. In other words, he's saying there is life. That's when you are barely surviving. First Kings chapter 17, from verse 8 to 16. First Kings 17, 8 to 16 tells you the story of the widow of Zarepa. Every day she had food. But what kind of food? Well, bread. Because there was oil and there was flour. And so she make bread. What kind of life is that? Bread in the morning, 
bread in the evening, bread today, bread tomorrow, bread <laughs> like that for more than two and a half years. But she was living. But then there is abundant life. Abundant life, that means at least you have sufficiency. Second Kings chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7, Second Kings 4, 1 to 7, tells you the story of the, 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 the widow, one of the son of prophets, who was in debt, and God intervened, and the Bible says she paid off the debt and had enough to live on herself and the son for the sons for the rest of their lives. And there is abundant life with a but. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings 4, 8 to 17, there was a Shunammite woman. She had abundance of everything except a child. 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 1 to 14, 2 Kings 5, 1 to 14, Naaman was great rich, successful, popular, but was a leper. That's abundant life with a but. And then there is more abundant life. That's life full of everything without a but. And I'm praying in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that before this month ends, you will know the meaning of life more abundant. And then it's not only life that is in degrees, greatness is in degrees. Some of you are already great, praise the Lord. Keep the fire on because you can move from great to greater. Not only you, but you can be great and then your children can be greater than you, which has been my prayer all along. And I'm praying it again for you tonight that all of you, my children, you'll be greater than I in Jesus' name. The Bible made it clear, Genesis 24, 34 to 35, Genesis, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone that is about to turn your night today. Thank you, thank you very much, God. Genesis 24, from verse 34 to 35, Bible tells us Abraham was great. Genesis 26, from verse 12 to 16, Genesis 26, 12 to 16, the Bible says Isaac was very great. Genesis 30, 25 to 43, Genesis 30, 25 to 43, the Bible says Jacob was exceedingly great. Genesis 41, from verse 1 to 44. Genesis 41, from verse 1 to 44. Joseph, one of the sons of uh, Jacob, was practically the, the man who became the, the, the controller of the whole world because he became prime minister of Egypt and Egypt was controlling the world. So greatness is in degrees. You are great. In the name that's above every other name, your children will be greater than you. Yeah. Your grandchildren will be greater than your children. Yeah. Your great grandchildren will be greater than your grandchildren. Yeah. If I were you, I would say amen to that. And then, like I told those of you who came to Divine Encounter, 
how come that Isaac became very great? It's because he kept on refueling. The first year he sold, he had a hundredfold returns. So when he was going to sow the following year, he sold a hundredfold seed. And he had another hundredfold return. So by the second year, he had moved from one seed to a harvest of 10,000. Then the third year again, he sowed. This time, 10,000 seed. And he kept on sowing. Higher seed, higher harvest. He kept on refueling. I've told you the story of how, why I used to pray for people, those my friends who give me a gift. When I, I bless them and I say, next time will be more. I told you the story. I told you the story of a young man who attended one of my teachings very small boy compared to the people who were there in Ikoyi. Finished the preaching, came to me and said, sir, I've never had this kind of sermon before. And he gave me a gift of $10,000. I looked at him, I said, thank you very much, sir. Next time will be more. He left my presence full of anger. What kind of a greedy man of God is this? Give him $10,000. He said, next time will be more. He thought I was saying, that's too small. But the next year when he came, <laughs> he said, I didn't understand your prayer. He said, last year, I had, I think, 11 petrol stations. By the following year, he had 110. So, so he brought another gift. This time, not 10,000. I know you want to know, but it's none of your business. <laughs> and I prayed the same prayer for him. Next time will be more. <laughs> By the following year, when he came, he told me now he had a depot. Because his, his tankers were so many, instead of going, going to queue anywhere, he had his own depot. And so he sold again. And I prayed the same prayer. By the following year, he was not just selling petrol in Nigeria, he was already selling petrol in the United Kingdom. Ah, I pray for someone here today. <laughs> you will get richer by the day. But you must keep on refueling. Keep on refueling. Promotion can be in degrees. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 11 to 13, 1 Samuel 16, from verse 11 to 13, David was anointed king among his brethren. He was a king within the family. By the time we got to 1 Samuel chapter 22, from verse 1 to 2, 1 Samuel 22, 1 to 2, he was captain of about 400 men. He was already on his way. Those people, even though they were all kinds of poor ruffians, vagabonds, they became mighty men, mighty men of David. But then in 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, he became king over Judah. Going up. By the time we got to 2 Samuel chapter 5, 2 Samuel chapter 5 from verse 1 to 3, he became king over the whole of Israel. 
But it didn't stop there. By the time we are reading Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, he had become the father of Jesus. Bartimaeus said, Jesus, thou son of David. Why? Luke chapter 1, from verse 26 to 33. Luke 1, 26 to 33. When the angel came to visit Mary, he told Mary, the son you are going to give battle, God will give him the throne of his father David. This fellow kept growing, going higher and higher and higher. Well, how come? He kept on sowing. We'll talk a little more about him later on. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Lord asked me to tell somebody, you better pay attention, pay attention to this. Because apparently God has said it before, and maybe you didn't believe him. He asked me to tell you, your external enemies will be scattered. Your internal enemies will be frustrated. Mm. He asked me to tell you, mark my, mark my word. I, I missed that. He must have said it before, baby, you didn't believe. You will testify very soon. That brings us to the issue of heat. Because we are talking about refueling your fire. Hotness can also be in degrees. No matter how hot you are now, you can be hotter. And I'm praying for those of you who are here today, by the time you are leaving this place this night, you'll be so hot, the enemy won't be able to touch you. <laughs> when you read Daniel chapter 3, and you read from verse 1 to 6, Daniel 3, thank you, Father. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight. He said, almost all doors have been shut against you. But he asked me to tell you, before the end of this month, they will begin to open rapidly. In Daniel chapter 3, from verse 1 to 6, there is what is called furnace. If you want to know what a furnace is, go to any of these uh, steel industry places. There was, a, there was a steel industry in Oshobo some years ago. I don't know whether it is there. And I, and I went to visit somebody there. And they showed me a furnace. You can see iron coming red hot, soft coming out. <laughs> they call it furnace. That place it was hot. But by the time you read Daniel chapter 3, from verse 14 to 17, Daniel 3, 14 to 17, Nebuchadnezzar said that they should make the furnace seven times hotter. It was already very hot. He said, make it seven times hotter. But then, by the time you read Daniel chapter 3, from verse 20 to 27, Daniel 3, 
from verse 20 to 27, there is someone called the son of man, so hot that he swallowed all the heat of the furnace. So that those who are his children were just walking about with him and they were discussing. And the king said, what am I seeing? I we threw in three people that are four, and the four had no heart. I decree in the name of the one who called me, from tonight onward, the fire of the world will have no effect on you. In First King chapter 18, from verse, uh, in verse 38, First King 18, verse 38, there is a fire so hot that it drinks water. Water is supposed to put out fire, but there is a fire of God. And when it comes down, it can even drink water. Elijah was hot. Second King chapter 9, verse 12, uh, verse 9 to 12. You know the person he was. Second King chapter chapter one. Second King chapter one from verse nine to twelve. He was hot. Some soldiers came to arrest him. We said, Man of God, come down. You are under arrest. He said, Really? You know I'm a man of God and you want to arrest me? He said, Roast. And immediately they became ashes. I like Elijah. <laughs> I don't know about you, I like Elijah. I'm praying for somebody here today before you leave this place. Any jam, any virus, any kind of sickness, when they come near you, they will roast. Elijah was sought. Ah, thank you, Father. I think I'm going to say amen to this one, Father. Because the Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said, before the help that you are expecting from a human being arrives, his own will arrive. Well, thank you, my father. <laughs> I want to, but daddy asked me to tell you a story because he wants to say something about it. When we came to this campground in 1983, the highway was being tormented by highway robbers. And this very campground happens to be their headquarters. Remember, those of you who are old enough to remember, you know that you are traveling at night and they throw a block or whatever at your tire, the tire will bust, and they come and rob you. Our carpenters were here who were principally the people living here then. And a, a, a car broke down, and the people there ran to the camp because this is a place where there was only, only light here. It was jungle. And then some policemen were patrolling they saw the car that broke down. They knew the robbers had been operating. So they hid in the bush, waiting for the robbers to come and rob the car. They didn't know that the occupants had already come to the camp. And so the carpenters 
follow these uh, people to go and collect whatever luggage they had left in the car. But the police were hiding. So when they saw my carpenters coming towards the car, they thought, here, here comes the robbers. And their leader gave an order, fire. My people heard the word fire, they didn't know what was that. But nothing happened. And again, the officer said, I say fire. And nothing happened. Third time, fire. And nothing happened. Until my children got to them and they discovered, no, we, <laughs> we are innocent people. The Lord asked me to tell someone. He said, those hands that are trying to attack you, I will freeze them. <laughs> Elijah was hot, that's what I was saying. But we all know that Elisha was much hotter. I mean, the king knew that Elijah was hot when he was going to arrest him. He sent 50 soldiers and a captain. When another king wanted to arrest Elisha, he knew that this one <laughs> is very, very hot. He sent a whole army. That's how hot Elisha was. So, hotness can be in degrees. Some of you are hot now. But as you refuel your fire constantly, you can get hotter and hotter and hotter. Like I told the disciples yesterday, there are categories of flames. There is red flame produced by firewood. It can burn because it's a flame. But it will leave behind ashes and smoke. And then there's blue flame. That's the flame produced by your gas cooker. And that one <laughs> burns faster, burns without much noise, without ashes, and without smoke. But then there is white flame. There is the flame of the uh, welder that can cut through iron. My prayer for you today is that before you leave this place, you will be white flame. Yeah. And then, like, my daughter said, when you are talking about fire, certain things come to your mind. Light. Because where there is fire, there will be light. You can shine brighter. Brightness is in degrees. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 41. Thank you, Father. God said this is for one special family. And he asked me to tell you, your small family will one day become a clan. First Corinthians 15 verse 41 tells us that glories are in degrees. There's the glory of the moon, there's the glory of the sun, there's the glory of the stars. And then even among stars, there is uh, categories of uh, glories. When somebody is shining, we call him a star football star, uh, 
an artist who's a star, television star, etc., etc., shining. Do you know it is possible to outshine all your mates? That you, you, you are a star among stars. Everybody in your family is a star, but you can see outshine. When your heat increases, your brightness increases. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Proverbs 4, verse 18 tells us that the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Every one of you, my children, will be a star. But even among stars, you will be a star. When you consider the, 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 the apostles, you discover that Peter was a star. He shone among them. And I believe this is especially for one minister of God. All ministers will shine. But you will outshine them all. Because when you read Acts of Apostles chapter 5, from verse 14 to 16, Acts 5, 14 to 16, the Bible says, by the hands of the apostles were many miracles brought. But when it comes to Peter, his own case was different. His shadow was healing the sick. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5, from verse 14 to 16. And then as bright as Peter shone, there was somebody who shone brighter. So much so that God said in Acts chapter 19 from verse 11 to 12, Acts 19 from verse 11 to 12, the Bible says God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul. I've told you before, a miracle is a special intervention of God in the affairs of men. Now, to say special miracles means special, special. So much so that his handkerchief <laughs> began to be the sick. Demons will see his handkerchief come here and they will run. That man showed. And in the name that's above every other name, one day it will be written about you. <laughs> that God performs special miracles by your hand. <laughs> so how do we refuel? Again, my daughter has done a great job. Like I've, I will just add my own little bit to what she had already said. Like I told you, in the case of Isaac, you must keep sowing. Sow more and more and more. Don't stop. Just keep on. You can never trade with God and lose. It's not possible. I can tell you stories upon stories. I know who he is. I've seen him in action. Just keep on sowing. But then, apart from sowing, you must not just sow, so progressively. Second Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 17. Second Kings 4. 8 to 17. Thank you, Father. Again, God, God is saying he has told someone this one before, but the fellow is still worried. Lord asked me to tell you, 
all your children will end up well. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings 4, 8 to 17, the Shunammite woman started by giving Elijah food once in a while. But then she moved on and said, I can't do more than this. And she decided to build him an apartment. She kept on sewing progressively. When the time came, God rewarded her with something that money cannot buy. And then, learn to praise God. That's probably one of the greatest ways you can refuel your fire. I used to think that the greatest problem of Samson was his eyes. That he, he can't keep his eyes in the right direction. And that is true. That's, that was a big problem. That's why when the enemy caught him, the first thing they did was to pluck out his eyes. But I discovered that his greatest problem was in gratitude. He didn't know how to say thank you. He never said thank you to God all his life. Never. A lion came and roared at him. The Spirit of God came and he just took the lion, tore it into two and went his way. He didn't say thank you, Lord. No, no. When with the jawbone of an ass he slaughtered a thousand Philistines, you will have thought that you would say, Ah, God, thank you for this great deliverance. No. What did he say? <laughs> Samson, oh Samson, look at what you have done. With the jawbone of an ass, you have killed a thousand people. Not a word about thank you, God. Deliverance after deliverance, never say thank you. Maybe that's why God said, okay, since you are the one doing it, maybe we should leave you alone and let you do it. Let's see what you will achieve. That's why when the Spirit of God departed from him, he tried to go as before and found that ordinary human beings can bind him and take him into prison. I pray for all of us who are listening to me. God will never leave you alone. His fire went out because he never knew how to say thank you. Even when he was going to pray his final prayer, because God is merciful. As soon as Delilah cut off his hair and the enemy came and, hey, God was already looking down on him with mercy. The Bible said his hair began to grow again. And when he was going to pray his final prayer, he didn't say, God, strengthen me one more time. Let me take vengeance on these people for ill-treating your servant so that your name will be glorified. No, 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 he said. I want to avenge my eyes. It was himself, 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 all the time. How come David grew steadily from king in the family to king in the cave to king of Judah to king of Israel? To the father of the king of kings, he knew how to praise God. And look at him. Psalm 34, from verse 1 to 3. 
Psalm 34 from verse 1 to 3 he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Ah. He, said, he said, I'm not going to stop. I will just keep on praising him. Look at Psalm 108 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 108 from verse 1 to 3. He said, My heart is fixed, O Lord. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. When you read 2 Samuel chapter 6, you can read the whole chapter. It's beautiful reading. When he was coming to town with the Ark of the Covenant of God, he began to dance. He danced so mightily that the Bible says his belly even came out of his uh, agbada. And when his wife said, how can you be dancing like this? You a king. He said, oh, I'm dancing for the one who made me a king. <laughs> when I became, before I became general of Isaiah, got born again in 1973, I was so glad that God saved my soul. I decided that at least once a year, I will sing and praise God. That's when I started composing a week, well, several years ago. And my first a week is some one that somehow <laughs> I remain an evergreen one. Ebamini Jesus logo, Amen. Ebamini Jesus logo, Amen. The second one that followed that one also had remained evergreen. Oh Lord, Undara, eh, Odara, Alpha, Omega, Dara, eh, Odara. I was expressing my gratitude to the one who saved my soul. And I went on year after year since then, every year. Then I became general overseer. And someone came to me and said, You are not the father of all of us. Let these children sing. You sit down. You are the king now. <laughs> I said, thank you. I will never stop praising him. I will praise him until I see him in glory. Is there anybody here tonight, instead of being begged, who will really, really, really shout hallelujah to God? A lion came, David fought and won, he sang a song. A bear came, David fought and won, he sang another song. Goliath came, he defeated him, he sang another song. He just kept on singing. The whole world knew him for singing, praising God. That's why when, when King Saul was tormented by demons and somebody said, you need a musician to relieve you, somebody said, I know someone. He was known for praising God. You know, the first book somebody wrote about me, the title of the book was, Let Somebody Shout Hallelujah. So go ahead, shout hallelujah. The fire is going to fall tonight. Because we are going to praise God. You see, God has been good to us. All these testimonies you are hearing every month, it's not, it's not the same thing happening all over the world. 
The Holy Ghost service began in 1986. It is still continuing. It's still getting bigger and bigger. And then somebody will now say to me, why do you begin your service by saying, let somebody shout hallelujah? So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, if you want to taste and see that the Lord is good, you better come now. You see, because God says, the praises, the sacrifice of a sinner is an abomination to him. He doesn't want to hear the praises of a sinner. So if you want to be praising him, you want to be refueling your fire, you want to grow bigger and bigger, greater and greater. You want to shine brighter and brighter. You want your future to just continue to be from one glory to another. The very first thing you must do is surrender your life to Jesus. Let his blood wash away your sins, and then you can continue from there. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come now. I'm going to count from one to ten. Before I say 10, I want you to stand before the altar and we will pray for the salvation of your soul. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three, and those of you in the old auditorium, you have to move faster. Four, Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Thank you very much. Now, those of you who are already in front and those of you who are on the way, cry to the Almighty God and say, please save my soul. Forgive my sins. I will serve you from now on. Let your blood wash me clean. I want to be able to praise you. I want to be one of your children. Lord, have mercy on me. Let your blood wash away my sins. Save my soul today, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Go ahead, talk to him. And please, the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. And pray that the one who saved our own souls will save their own souls also. Pray for them. Intercede for them. Those of you who are still on the way, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. We still have quite a bit of things to do tonight, so hurry up. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to say thank you very much for your word. Thank you for all these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them. Forgive all their sins. Let your blood wash them clean. Please write their names in the book of life. Receive them into the family of God. And please, Lord, from now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. And let them serve you till the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Those of you who have come forward, congratulations. Uh, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Okay. Now, uh, from now on, by God's grace, I'll be praying for you. So I need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you, from now on, I'll be praying for you. I think, I think the counselors are already with you, or if they are not, if you turn to your left, the counselors will move you to where some people are waiting. They will collect the information I need, and then they bring you back very quickly. God bless you. You can begin to go. Let's, let's, let's clap for the Lord Jesus Christ as they go. Thank you, Father. for our new brothers and sisters maybe you want to write down your prayer points first one of course is you want to thank him for all he had done for you salvation of your soul your health His provision for you. Providing you with clothes to wear. Somewhere to stay, somewhere to sleep. Covering your secrets. You don't have to go a begging before you can meet your responsibilities. Give him thanks tonight like we've never done before. It's very, very important for all the victories he has given you. Thank him for his mercy. The Bible says of the mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed. It is renewed every day. Thank you, thank him for breathing. You don't know how valuable it is to be able to breathe until you see somebody who has been attacked by coronavirus that you know it's, it's a blessing that you can breathe easily. Thank him for ability to sleep whenever you want to sleep. Thank him for ability to go to the toilet easily.
and then thank him that you can even be here tonight that you can be part part of part and parcel of the blessings of God thank him for the prophecies that are gone for tonight And thank him even for the testimonies we keep hearing. God healing cancer, proving to the mighty doctors that he is the doctor of all doctors, proving again and again that there's nothing too hard for him. Thank you for the Holy Ghost service that has been going on now since 1986. And you see waxing stronger. Thank you that we can even hear from him again and again. But you will look at this great crowd and say, hey, there's someone here. Hey, there's someone here. Accurately. Thank him for me that he has been merciful to all of us by making me a virtue unto honor. So let's spend quality time thanking him tonight. Then number two, pray that God will make you so hot that from tonight the enemy will not be able to touch you at all make you so hot uh, the enemies will know don't go near then number three pray that he will make you so bright that the enemy will not be able to look at your direction at all. Make you so bright. The enemy won't be able to look in your direction at all. Ask him to make you so fast. that the enemy can catch up with you. That's number four. He empowered Elijah. He outran the chariots of the king. So that's God to make you so fast. The enemy can catch up with you. Number five. Ask him to lift you up so high that you'll be well beyond the reach of the enemy. It's all things that can happen when your fuel is your fire is refueled by God Himself. That he will lift you up so high, you'll be far, far beyond the reach of the enemy. Number six. Ask him to make you so great every enemy will be under your feet. Ask God to make you so great 
Every enemy will be under your feet. And then number seven, ask him to equip you more. So you can serve him better. Ask him to equip you more. So you can serve him better. Number eight. Pray that this year convention will be absolute heaven on earth in every way possible. Heaven on earth. In every way possible. And then number nine, your own private prayer point. Everywhere where you want the fire of God to touch. Number 10, uh, don't forget to pray for me too. I've been number 10. Now, the altar is open. Let's go ahead and begin to praise God. Let's praise Him. Give Him all glory, all honor, all adoration.
Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, on behalf of all of us, I say thank you. Thank you for breathing. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for provision. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for protection. Thank you for appetite. Thank you for food to eat. Thank you for ability to sleep. Thank you for all manners of victories. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, my special request tonight is that you make your children so hot the enemy won't be able to touch them. Make them so bright the enemy can't look at them. Make them so fast the enemy can't catch up with them. Make them so high the enemy can't touch them. Make them so great the enemies will be under their feet. Anoint them so mightily so they will serve you better. Grant their requests. Meet all their needs. Revive them. Strengthen them. Protect them. Promote them. And Lord, during your convention, do marvelous things. For every one of us, my Father, my God, let our tomorrow be greater. Thank you for answer prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Uh, let someone shout hallelujah. In the name that's above every other name, you will never know sorrow again. Any enemy that tries to cause you sorrow, the fire of God will consume. Poverty will become a stranger to you. You will never know failure again. From today onward, every obstruction on your way will be consumed by fire. The Lord will receive your offering. He will bless it. He will use it for his glory. And you will never lack. Before the end of this year, your testimonies will be complete. But the next time I see you, your testimonies will be great. It shall be well with you. And you too will serve God to the end. Go in peace. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I want you to shout hallelujah like fire.